Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at investment interest limitation. We're going back to Schedule Schedule A. This topic is covered in income tax course, the CPA exam regulation, as well as the enrolled agent exam. So in the itemized deduction, I touched upon this topic. I told you I will cover it much more in details. And this is now, this is the much more in details now. As always, I would like to remind you, please connect with me on a professional level on my LinkedIn account. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should create one as well as the personal level, Facebook, if you if you chose to, of course, but I do have a Facebook page called Accounting Lectures, please like it. You wanna make sure you subscribe to my YouTube because you'll get all up to date or of all recording. Please like my YouTube, share them, put them in playlist. If you know anyone's interested, forward them the email. My Twitter account is Farhat Lectures is my handle, and I do have a website where you can get in touch with me and view the recordings by course and chapter. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording on Jaeger CPA Review, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures, thousands, you can review thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution. So if you're a CPA student or if you're an accounting student, this is a great resource to supplement your college studies. Simulations with solution, CPA textbook, audio lectures, electronic flashcards, plus others. What you should do, you should supplement your courses with Jaeger CPA review. If you happen to choose Jaeger, use the promo code PMF, you will get 10% off of the best valued course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So let's talk about the topic of investment interests. Okay, the investment interest deduction, this is what we're talking about here. What are we talking about? First of all, we need to know what is investment interest? What, 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 does, it, what does it mean? Well, it's interest on loans whose proceeds are used to purchase investments such as property, stocks, bonds, and land. So basically what you do is you borrowed money to buy stocks, bond, and land to make investment. Now I do sometime, let's put it this way, I used to, not I do, not, not anymore. I used to borrow money to buy stocks, which is called on margin. So you borrow the money. For example, if you have $10,000 in your account, the broker will give you another ten thousand dollar and but what's going to happen this is borrowing money you have to pay interest on it now i suggest you don't do this you know again let me let me clarify don't do this this is called buying stocks on margin it's really bad so don't do it but i've just let you know so how it works for the for the purpose of this for the purpose of illustrating the concept okay now deduction how much can you deduct that interest deduction of investment interest expense is limited to net investment income now we need to define what's net investment income and every time you hear the word net it means you're taking one thing and subtracting it from another net investment income is investment income less investment expense now we need to define what is investment income and what's investment expense investment income is gross income from interest certain dividend just say dividend annuities and royalties not derived from business. Now you could also treat net capital gain as investment income and qualified dividend as investment income. However, if you treat them if you treat them as investment income, if you chose to treat them, then you cannot tax them based as capital gain. So you would lose your your uh, capital gain a favorable rate. So net capital gain and qualified dividend you can treat them as investment income. You don't have to treat them as investment income. If you treat them as investment income, if you want to include them in this computation, you do have that option. But remember, if you do so, they basically become ordinary income in a sense, and they would lose their preferential rate for the capital gain, which is 0, 15, and 20% rate. Now, so we talked about investment income. What's investment expenses? All expenses other than interest, because we cannot be deducting what we need to talk about. Okay, so all expenses directly related to the investment, but not the interest expense, such as property taxes, brokerage fee, investment council fees, any investment, any expense related to the investment, but not obviously not interest. Okay, what happened if you have any interest expense that you cannot take that you cannot deduct this year? Investment interest is allowed in the current year due to the limitation is carried forward to future years until ultimately used. So if you have any unused interest expense deduction, you could carry it for future years. Remember here we are talking about Schedule A. And unfortunately, I should have I should have showed you Schedule A. You know what? Let me show you Schedule A. 
all right this is schedule a so i just changed my mind i'm going to show you schedule a and this is where this investment interest goes attach form 4952 which is you have to do so but this is what investment interest so it's it's a schedule a and i'm not going to say it's a from agi because it's obvious if you know it's it's uh it's uh it's on schedule a it means it's from agi so there we go i showed i showed it to you i should have just had it part of the recording but that's fine let's take a look at this example ethan financial record for the year reflect the following interest income increase income from the bank savings account ten thousand that's investment income taxable and with your receipt five thousand five hundred that's investment income property tax on investment that's an investment expense and investment interest expense that's we have to keep on the side so what we have to find out first is our investment net investment income so basically coming back here we have to find our net investment income here we have um, our investment income is 15,500 minus 200 so our investment income is 15,300 now we incur interest of 17,000 well if we incur interest of 17,000 we are limited to 15,300 so we can deduct 15,300 and anything that's left okay anything that's left is carried to future years so we are limited to that let's take a look at this example Helen Derby borrowed 150,000 to to acquire a parcel land to be held as an for investment purposes during the year she reported adjusted gross income of 90,000 paid interest of 12,000 on the loan so this is our interest expense other item related to Helen are as follow interest and annuity income 11,000 long-term capital gain on the sale of stock 3,500 and real estate tax on the investment of land is 800 okay so real estate this is an expense now determine helen's investment interest deduction for the current year discuss the treatment of the portion of helen interest expense that's disallowed okay now we have two scenarios basically here okay the first scenario is this we're going to take investment income which is eleven thousand minus the expense of 800 and that's going to give us 10,200 okay 10,200 of net investment income net investment income then if that's the net investment income our interest expense is 12,000 so we can only deduct so we can we cannot deduct the 12,000 we can deduct 10,200 of interest expense and we carry over we're going to carry over with us uh, 1,800 for future years this is one scenario what is the other scenario remember long-term capital gain capital gain and qualified dividend we could also consider them as investment income if we consider them as investment income if we elected to do so they would lose their value um, as income subject to capital gain preferential rates so let's let's work the other scenario the other scenario is you have eleven thousand of interest in annuity income plus we're going to consider the three thousand five hundred as investment income therefore you have total investment income of 14,500 then you deduct 800 which will give us 13,000 god I can't uh, think 13,700 so this is your net investment income now what you can do the full 12,000 is deductible now the full 12,000 under this scenario is deductible okay why because your net investment income is more than 12,000 therefore you can deduct the full the whole thing okay so hopefully you see under this scenario that we have two different scenarios hopefully you can see this depending on how we want to treat the 3500 and again the taxpayer will have to um, weigh both options weigh both options because what's going to happen if we treat them as third as 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 uh, investment income they are taxed as ordinary income versus taxed at the preferential treatment so we have to make that decision if you have any questions, any comments, by all means email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA or your college courses, study hard. It's worth it.